the mode of transmission within the chain of infection this is the most weakest point wherein healthcare providers can actually break the chain okay there are two classifications of the mode of transmission first is direct and we have indirect indirect we are talking here about direct contact and the droplet spread which we're going to talk about later on indirect is caused by airborne transmission vehicle-borne and vector-borne transmission. As part of direct, we have what we call contact transmission. It is the most common mode of transmission and transfers from person to person through touching, kissing, biting, fecal-oral, even transplacental, sexual intercourse, and contaminated soil. Here's the thing, even as healthcare professionals, we are actually touching our eyes, nose, and mouth without even realizing it, which actually poses or spreads infection in a much faster and much more progressive rate. As part of our direct uh, transmission, we have droplet transmission. In droplet transmission, these are large particles, short-range aerosols that may be produced by sneezing, coughing, and even talking. Examples of diseases that we can acquire through droplet transmission is pertussis and meningococcal infections. Indirect transmission or airborne transmission. These are droplets that are lesser in size than opposed to what we said earlier. They are less than 5 micrometers and usually infectious agents are carried by dust or droplet nuclei suspended in air. Vehicle-borne transmission. These are substances that maintain the life of an agent until it is ingested or inoculated into the susceptible host. Soiled clothes, eating utensils, water, food, milk, surgical instruments, and blood or biological products are usually the cause of vehicle-borne transmission. Here is a fact. According to one study, wherein a doctor was checking 71 patients, Aside from the hands of the doctor, which were spreading or has a lot of microorganisms, the stethoscope was considered the most dirtiest part of the doctor. So it means, take care of your stethoscopes. Vector-borne transmission. Anthropodes transmit the agent by biting susceptible hosts or even by depositing the agent into the skin or food. The vector may be infected itself or act as a carrier of the agent, such as flies. Other vector-borne transmission agents are mosquitoes, ticks, flies, rodents, and even cockroaches. After being transmitted, the pathogens must now enter the susceptible host. Therefore, we're going to talk about portal of entry, then our susceptible host. A portal of entry is a site through which the microorganisms now enter your susceptible host. Infectious agents enter the body through various portals, including the mucous membranes, the broken skin, the respiratory, and even the gastrointestinal tract of your patient. A susceptible host does not possess sufficient resistance in order to fight off infectious agents to prevent infection. Specific characteristics influencing susceptibility are the following. You have your age of your patient, chronic or active disease history, nutritional status, immune status, medications, and even damage to the integumentary system such as the skin, trauma, or by surgery.